Hi, Ben here from Trident Fly Fishing, and today we're back in the studio to talk about the 11 must-have flies for saltwater. Stay tuned. Now, you might be asking, why 11? And the truth of it is, I had nine really good ones, and I couldn't decide between the last two, so I decided to go with 11. But let's get started, and number 11 is the Seaducer. Now, the Seaducer was originally tied in the 1940s by Homer Rhodes to fish for snook. What I really like about this fly is it's sort of somewhere in between a bait fish and a shrimp, and it's just a really good impressionistic fly for both. It's a really good overall forage pattern, and it does especially well when you're fishing to laid up fish in skinny water because you can land this thing very, very stealthily. I've caught lots of fish from snook to redfish. While I haven't fished this fly in the Northeast for stripers, I'm guessing that on those striper flats, it would do just fine. Number 10 is the slider. The slider is really a variation of the marabou muddler. I think it was originally tied by Steve Huff, but lots of variations have come up since. And the slider is really designed to push a lot of water and wiggle a lot. So you can see this one here is tied with a rabbit strip, and it just produces a lot of movement in the water. This fly is great for snook. I've caught tarpon on these in the Everglades. It's just a fantastic pattern, and it does an especially good job at imitating a mullet. But if you tie it a little bit smaller, like this one, you can use it to imitate much, much smaller forage as well. And it's just gonna be a better fly for when the water's a little bit murkier and fish can't quite see the fly, but they can feel it pushing through that water. Number nine is going to be a popper. This one I have here is a Bob's Banger, which is a great popper. But overall, if you're fishing to fish that are eating on top, a popper is probably the most fun way to catch them. Particularly if you're fishing for stripers or jacks or something that's really blowing up a lot of bait, popper is the way to go. And there's a lot of great poppers out there, but Bob's Bangers definitely near the top of that list. And now sticking with the topwater theme is number eight, the gurgler. If you've been around saltwater fly fishing or warm water fly fishing, you've probably heard of this pattern. It has a really great action that creates just enough noise to imitate a shrimp or a bait fish or a bug or something. All I really know is that the gurgler works really well and it's always a must have pattern in my saltwater fly box. This video is supported 100% by your purchases at Trident Fly Fishing. So if you're in the market for some new tackle, check us out at tridentflyfishing.com. Up next is the Deceiver at number seven. And of course, this was tied by the late great Lefty Cray, and it's a fantastic all-around bait fish imitation. I didn't rank it higher than number seven because while I always have one in my box, it's generally not my go-to bait fish pattern. I tend to find that other patterns that can imitate more specific forage work better for me. And so it's not quite as high as some of those other patterns, but I always have one. And if you're fishing for pretty much anything that eats other fish, the deceiver is a must have fly. And number six on my list is the EP crab. And this comes in several variations, the Ascension Bay crab, the permit crab, basically though, they're all gonna be fairly similar. It's a Del Brown style crab that's tied with EP fibers, so it just doesn't hold water like the old Del Brown crab did. And because of that, I think it's a much better pattern to have in your box than the Del Brown crab. I fish these here in Maine for stripers. I fished them for permit. I've even caught snook and redfish on these flies. They're a must have in your saltwater fly box. Number five, is Viverka's mantis shrimp. Now this is a general shrimp imitator, obviously, but I really like it because you can fish it in different spots in the water column. It lands really softly. If you wanted to add lead eyes to the pattern, you can get it down and fish from permit to stripers on the flats, really love it. So if there's shrimp in the water, which is pretty much all salt water anywhere, you can fish this mantis shrimp pattern and do well with it. And speaking of mantis shrimp, number four on our list is the EP spawning shrimp. And you might be saying, wait a second, these are too similar. Well, the reality is, is that they're not at all. 
Verveca's shrimp is typically tied with bee chain eyes and no color, whereas the EP spawning shrimp has a hot spot tied with a brush, typically with lead eyes. Honestly, this pattern here is one of my go-tos, especially for tropical saltwater fishing. I find that because of the hot spot, it just tends to work a little bit better in more varied conditions, and of course, deeper water with these lead eyes than Viverka's mantis. If you fish it really, really fast, it can almost even pass for a little bait fish. Now we're getting down to business, and number three on our list is probably gonna be a very controversial one, but it is the woolly bugger. Not necessarily the woolly bugger that you're thinking of. Let's face it, the crystal bugger or the schminnow or whatever you wanna call it is basically a woolly bugger. Whenever you're trying to imitate rain bait or other small saltwater forage, the woolly bugger does it really, really well. And I think it's a must have pattern and one that I've got in my box, no matter where I'm going. Now, of course, I don't tie these the traditional woolly bugger method. I do use more flash. I do use some eyes on it, but at the end of the day, this is a woolly bugger. Number two on the list is gonna be the EP peanut butter. And really this is any EP bait fish fly. They are just a fantastic overall bait fish imitator. They come in tons and tons of sizes and shapes, and you can get them anywhere from an A dot down to like a number four. So if it swims and you're trying to imitate it, there's probably an EP bait fish pattern that'll do it for you. And I fished it with great success from Maine to Belize. And number one on our list of must have saltwater patterns, the one fly that you must always have in your box, no matter where you're going in the salt, and frankly, even some fresh water, the clouser. The clouser is just a fantastic pattern. It produces that great jigging action and you can tie it as a half and half. You can tie in craft fur, or you can make something really crazy that imitates a ballyhoo like this one. But at the end of the day, this is a clouser and no matter where you fish it, it's probably gonna work pretty well. And if you really think about it, even a gotcha or a crazy Charlie could theoretically be considered a clouser of sorts. Bob Clouser did the world a great favor and we've all caught a lot more saltwater fish because of it and you wanna have it in your box for sure. Tell us what your favorite saltwater fly is by leaving us a comment in the box below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel because we've got lots of great videos coming up. I'm Ben, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.